Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Kits Rock Review. Before we get started, please do me a favor. If you're watching this on Facebook, please like and follow. If you're watching this on YouTube, please like and subscribe. So, how's everybody doing? I don't know what it's like where you are, but where I am, it's really hot and humid today. So, I'm gonna be in my nice air conditioned apartment here working on this Kits Rock Review. So, the topic for tonight's episode is going to be the Beatles. Okay, I recently read that Peter Jackson, he's the guy that directed the Lord of the Rings trilogy and the Hobbit trilogy, is working on a documentary about the Beatles. Um, what he's doing is he's using unused footage of the Beatles that they filmed while they were recording the Let It Be album. For those of you that don't know, the Let It Be album was originally gonna be called Get Back, and the, the Beatles were filming themselves practicing new songs in anticipation of a one-off concert. Now, eventually, for various reasons, I'm not going to get into the whole history of the project, um, that one-off concert collapsed, and it just became them recording new songs. The part that survives about the concert is their rooftop concert, the last time the Beatles performed in public. But there's still, you know, they eventually ended up making a something like a two-hour documentary based on the, all the footage. But there are days and days and hours and hours of unused footage. And that's what Peter Jackson is using to make his new documentary about the Beatles. And originally it was supposed to be just a documentary, you know, two and a half, three hour type of thing. But because of COVID and all the time Peter Jackson's had to work on it, instead of being a two and a half, three hour documentary, it's going to end up being a, uh, I heard, a six part miniseries on Disney+. Plus. I haven't seen an official announcement of that, but I would be up for that because I'm me and Music documentaries are cool. Okay. For those of you that don't know, Let It Be was the last album the Beatles released as a band. It was released in May 1970. And approximately one month before it was released, Paul issued a statement saying that he was leaving the group. So it ended up effectively, you know, just that announcement disbanded the Beatles. But that got me thinking about this, hearing about this documentary. What if the Beatles didn't break up after Let It Be? What would their next album have sounded like if they had released an album in 1971? So today on this episode of Kids Rock Review, we're gonna pretend the Beatles didn't break up. There's some alternate earth somewhere where the Beatles released another album after Let It Be. And by the way, since it's 2021 right now, this year, would, this year on that earth is the 50th anniversary of the release of that fictitious Beatles album from 1971. Anyway, in 1970, after Let It Be was released, all four Beatles released solo albums. John Lennon released John Lennon Plastic Ono Band. Paul McCartney released McCartney. George Harrison released All Things Must Pass. And Ringo Starr released Boku of Blues. So for this fictitious Beatle al Beatles album that we're going to talk about, we're going to take three songs off uh, Lennon's solo album, three songs off McCartney's solo album, three songs off Harrison's solo album, but we're only going to take one song off Ringo's album because, you know, Ringo only gets one song per album with the Beatles anyway. Plus, there are two non-album singles that Lennon and McCartney recorded and released in late 1970, early 1971, and we're going to include them, them on this fictitious Beatles album. So, in essence, we're going to have three George Harrison songs, which is just about his limit for Beatles albums. He only gets two to three songs per album. So it's it's almost as if it's a real Beatles album, right? Okay, first off, we need to name this album something. So some Beatles albums are named after songs on the album. Sgt. Pepper's Only Hearts Club Band. There's a song called Sgt. Pepper's Only Hearts Club Band. Help, there's a song called Help. Hard Day's Night, there's a song called Hard Day's Night. Let It Be, there's a song called Let It Be. Other Beatles albums? The titles aren't related to the songs on the album. Rubber Soul, there's no song called Rubber Soul. Revolver, there's no song called Revolver. Abbey Road is just the name of the studio where they recorded the album. The White Album, which is originally titled The Beatles, there's no song called The White Album or The Beatles. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna have a play, when I name this fictitious Beatles album, I'm actually gonna have a play on words. Um, for those of you that don't know, before Sgt. Pepper's Only Hearts Club Band, the Beatles released different albums in the States and different albums in Great Britain. It actually really wasn't their plan. What would happen is a British album contained 14 tracks 
and an American album contained 10 to 11 tracks. So Capitol, the American record company, they would take the British album and they'd only, instead of releasing all 14 tracks from the British, British album, they'd only release 10. And eventually they accumulated more tracks. After, you know, three albums, they had a like, 10 to 12 tracks they left off the, uh, the albums. So they would release different albums in the States. One of those albums they released was called Beatles 65. It's basically the U.S. equivalent, sort of, of Beatles for Sale. So this fictitious Beatle, I'm going to play on words. They had Beatles 65 in the States. Our fictitious Beatles album from 1971 is going to be called Beatles 71. Sounds like a good idea to me. Now I'm going to try a little experiment here. I'm going to try sharing my screen, something I haven't done before. So uh, let me find the, oh, there it is, the present button. And I'm going to do this little uh, presentation of the songs that are going to be on Beatles 71. Okay. Okay, so here we go. Oh my God. I've got my little Kits Rock Review logo there. And if the Beatles had released an album in 1971, Beatles 71, and remember, this is a vinyl album, so it has an A side and a B side. Back in the 70s, there weren't CDs, there weren't playlists. You actually had two sides to an album, and you tried to, uh, you know, balance the sides out, make sure there were strong songs on strong songs on both sides. So we'll start off with side A of the vinyl record. Put down the needle, and we'll start with Power to the People. This was a non-album single that Lennon released in 1971. And according to what I've read, he was trying to create a sing-along, sort of along the lines of, you know, give Pete's a chance. And I thought that would be a good way to open the album with a sing-along song that people could sing to, strong track, um, sort of like a yellow submarine with a political message. Remember at this time, Lennon was, you know, into the leftist, leftist politics, you know, give Pete's a chance, power to the people, obviously, even revolution by the Beatles. So that's what we're going to open with uh, Beatles 71 with. Then the second song on side A is What Is Life from George Harrison from his debut triple album. He had accumulated enough songs when he was with the Beatles to release a triple album as solo debut. Um, and this is one of many George Harrison love songs that's directed both to a woman and a God. Because he was trying to find both romantic love with a woman and he was also looking for what he called a spiritual high by trying to find God through various religions, Christianity, Eastern mysticism, and all sorts of things. And I remember the first time I heard What Is Life, and I thought it was like a lost Beatles song that I'd never heard before. And I thought it was an amazing track. I wondered why I'd never heard it as a Beatles song before. And then I later found out it was George Harrison's solo song. So that's why I'd never heard it as like on an oldie station in a Beatles marathon before. But it's an amazing track. It's one of my favorite George Harrison songs. The third song on side A, is gonna be Another Day. This is a non-album single by Paul McCartney from February 1971. And its lyrics are about the daily routine of a lonely woman. The drummer on this, on this he recorded it in New York City, and the drummer uh, for the song was Denny Silwell, who would eventually become the first drummer of Wings. And he called this song the 70s version of Eleanor Rigby, you know, which is a, another song about a lonely woman. And along those same lines, um, we'll follow it up on side A with Working Class Hero uh, from John Lennon and his Plastic Ono Band album. You know, Working Class Hero is about moving up the social ladder. And John Lennon felt with Working Class Hero that he, he moved up the social ladder, but he really wasn't accepted by the people that he moved up to. So he sort of felt a little depressed about it. But I thought it'd be good to follow Another day with working class hero because they're sort of similar themes of loneliness through working and daily routines. And it just it made sense for me to put them together. Next, we got Ringo's only song on Beatles 71, Boku of Blues. Um, it's the title track of his 1970 album, solo album. And he recorded the whole album in Nashville. And remember, Ringo only gets one song. Um, so if he's only gonna get one song, we might as well make it a Ringo song. It's very similar to some songs that he recorded with the Beatles, like What Goes On and Don't Pass Me By, and even his cover of Act Naturally, very similar style, very similar musically. So if we're gonna have a Ringo song, you might as well have a 
I know you can't see me air quoting, but Ringo song on the album, Boku of Blues. Then we're going to end side A with My Sweet Lord, another one from All Things Must Pass. This was released as a single, and it would become the first Beatles solo single to hit number one. George Harrison, by the way, he had the distinction of having the first Beatles solo number one single. And later on, in 1988, 87, he would have the last Beatles number one solo single with Got My Mind Set On You. But anyway, this song, My Sweet Lord, was written by George Harrison while he was on tour with Delaney and Bonnie. And he wanted to write a gospel song. And he based it on the public domain song, Oh Happy Day. And it's about his search for God, once again, through both Christianity and Eastern mysticism. And it's a strong track, and I figure you know, might as well end side A with a strong song like uh, My Sweet Lord. And then you know what? The needle's running out, so we gotta flip over the vinyl to side B. And if we ended side A with a strong song, we're gonna start side B with a strong song too. We're gonna start it out with Maybe I'm Amazed. This is uh, from Paul McCartney, from his first solo album called McCartney. And it's called McCartney because Paul played every instrument on the album. And the song was written the lyrics are about Linda supporting him even when he was having going through these difficult times. And many people consider this one of his strongest, best songs. But you know what? I was surprised to find this out. It was never released as a single by Paul McCartney, even though it's considered one of his strongest songs. And it's been covered by a number of artists, including The Faces. I have the, the Faces cover of it, which I talked about on a previous Kits Rock review during a Barum Neon Project show. But Everyone should know Baby I'm Amazed, Maybe I'm Amazed. And we're going to follow that up on side B with the song Love from John Lennon Plastic Ono Band. And this is a song, it's about how John Lennon finally found love with Yoko Ono. Yeah, it was, it was a, he was going through therapy and he, during, during this time, and he realized, you know what, I'm in love with this woman. So he wrote a song about it. And interestingly enough, there's only two musicians on this album. John Lennon, he plays acoustic guitar and sings the song. And then producer Phil Spector plays piano. A little trivia for you there. After that, how about the song Junk? This was originally written by Paul McCartney when the Beatles were studying transcendental meditation in India. It was demoed for the White Album, but it was ultimately passed over. I believe a few years ago, the White Album got released as a deluxe edition, and I believe that the demo of Junk is on there. Um, but Paul, you know, pulled it out, since the Beatles didn't record it, he pulled it out for his uh, first solo album. And since it was originally, the Beatles did consider it, so we're gonna put it on Beatles 71, since they would have been familiar with it. And then on side B, we're gonna follow it up with another Paul McCartney song called Teddy Boy. It was also written in India, but he didn't introduce it to the rest of the band until the Let It Be sessions. And the Beatles did attempt to record it several times. And there's even one which has guitar feedback, which I haven't heard. I'd love to hear guitar feedback on this song because it's not a song you'd expect to hear guitar feedback on. Um, at one point, it was actually when they released like the initial track list for Let It Be, Teddy Boy was on there. But eventually got pulled from the album, and I think because you know they realized Paul McCartney was going to include it on his first solo album, so they pulled it. There is a Beatles version you can hear on the anthology album, the anthology three. So if you want to know what the Beatles version sounded like, it's on anthology three. But you know we're, we do have the Paul McCartney version from his solo album. And speaking of India songs, we'll follow that up with a. Uh, a song by John Lennon that he wrote while the Beatles were in India learning transcendental meditation called Look At Me. And if you listen to it, it has the same guitar finger picking pattern as Dear Prudence and Julia, which appear on the White Album. He actually learned that picking pattern from Donovan. He's the guy that recorded Sunshine Superman, for those of you that don't know. They considered Look At Me for the White Album, the Beatles did, but they ultimately left it off because it sounded too much like Dear Prudence and Julia and they didn't need a third song that had that similar style. But Lennon included it on John Lennon, Plastic Ono Band. And so we've come to the end of side B of Beatles 71. 
And we might as well end it with a song called All Things Must Pass. This uh, was written by George Harrison, and researching these songs before I put this together, I found out that All Things Must Pass was written when George Harrison was in upstate New York. He was uh, in the United States doing some record producing for artists the Beatles had signed to Apple Records. And he went to upstate New York to visit the band. He was a fan of the band. And he hung out with the band, you know, did some jamming with them, talked with them, just hung out. And he wanted to write a song that sounded like something from Music from the Big Pink, which was the band's first album. And so he came up with All Things Must Pass. And it's about how all things do. Nothing lasts forever. All things come to an end. The sunlight doesn't last all morning, according to George Harrison in the song. All things must pass away. And so I figured a song about endings is the perfect thing to end Beatles 71 with. Because all things must come to an end. All things must pass away. Okay, guys. So what do you think? What do you think about my Beatles 71 album? Are there other Beatles solo songs that I should have included on Beatles 71? Are there some of those songs that I included that you wouldn't have included? Why don't you let me know in the comments? And also in the comments, I'm going to put a playlist for Beatles 71 so you can listen to it again and again and again. And I, I, I really want to know what you guys think of it. So let me know in the comments. And until next time, guys, let's just keep on rocking in the free world, and I'll see you later.